Aloha, hey, it's Julie Zimla, 365 Hawaii Group with Real Broker, and I am here today doing a mortgage market update with Joe Egan from Win and Egan Team, and uh, Eric Zimla, also from the 365 Hawaii Group, is also here joining us, and uh, we are excited to be able to do kind of like a, 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 a lens on mortgage and rates on this experience. Uh, Joe usually joins us once a month for our TTT, and you hopefully you will see him again um, on the 16th of November. Um, but for today, we're going to just get him all the goodies all at the same time in one place. So, um, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say it's all Joe today. We're going to hear all okay. about the, the, yeah. the mortgages, just where just we're Joe. going, Joe, how we're get Joe, and more Joe, because you guys <laughs> need to know about what the heck is going on with the rates, about mortgages, what's happening. And one thing I love about Joe is that he is going to also give us a little bit, maybe, of some lens into the future about what's going to happen with uh, coming down the pike, what's happening with the rates and the mortgage and everything else. So, Joe, what do you know? Yeah, so it's good timing today, right? Because as I was mentioning earlier, the Fed just met today. So Jerome Powell came out and said they're going to leave rates unchanged, which was good. And he kind of gave us a look into his crystal ball a little bit. Um, and based upon just me being on this phone call and my opinion, I don't anticipate based upon listening to, it was like an hour long meeting that he had. I don't anticipate honestly that he's going to increase the rates moving forward. Now, you never know, and nobody technically does have that crystal ball, but based upon kind of economic leaders and based upon his verbiage that he used today, I think he's going to leave rates unchanged, which he stated he was going to do today. Mm -hmm. But I think he's going to see kind of how this plays out over the next coming months. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that same thing. I, I would agree with you that he was like, there's like, we're going to keep it there unless something bad happens. And then it seems like mm -hmm. he was going to raise that. that yeah. At the, and you're like, okay. So they're yeah. trying to fight inflation, right? And inflation, yeah. June 22 was 9%. Today, it's 3.7% headline right. inflation, right? So mm -hmm. it is working. What they're doing is working. They have the goal of 2%, but I think he's looking at other indicators stating, oh, and he mentioned even in the, um, meeting today, he mentioned the housing market and he's eyeing 8% mortgage rates, right? And he knows that affordability is becoming an issue because one of the biggest things is home prices falling, right? Mm -hmm. And he mentioned a slowdown in housing, but I think you're going to see people play with that a little bit and anticipate that rates on homes are going to go down. I don't necessarily think that's the case. I just think we saw just a rapid rate of appreciation over the last couple of years. 18% mm -hmm. wasn't sustainable, right? Right. Usually. And if it was, then I'd be buying right. more homes. It was 18% right? and then 20% right. and then 15%. So, uh, yeah. Exactly. So typically, a homes appreciate about 4% year over year. And I think that's starting to come into correction a little bit. Oh, and that's what we're seeing. So I was at another conference, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and they came out with a stat that they anticipate home prices will still appreciate 1% next year, 3% year after, and kind of level off there. So, okay. um, but it was a good day for rates. It was a good day for the market. I do think we're going to see a little bit of correction here. I don't anticipate rates will go down as quickly as people thought most Leaders in the mortgage industry thought when inflation started to go down, so will rates. However, kind of how bonds and with the federal government buying up all the bonds during COVID, they were buying up the bonds, which were driving the prices up and the yields low. Mm -hmm. Now they're stating we need to sell the bonds, right? We need to, if we're going to send money over to help with the war, mm -hmm. right, then we don't have that money. We need right. to get it from somewhere. So now what they're doing is trying to liquidate the bonds, drive that price lower and that yield higher, which is keeping rates up a little bit. And I think we'll keep rates probably up through the majority of next year, kind of fall at the end of like, the next quarter, last That's quarter kind next of what year. We've been hearing like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and how that affects people who are thinking about, um, you know, getting out of their own homes. And again, they, they're trying to get out of their homes where they already had a three or 4% rate and then they're trying to get a new home. That's, that, that still doesn't really quite make a lot of sense unless you have to move until then closer to next fall, right? Right. So we're seeing basically the market we're in right now going to continue on 
until this time yeah. of year, until yeah. some of affordability, because they're talking about, like, especially in California, the affordability is like the worst it's ever been. Like right. 54 percent in Hawaii, Hawaii too. Percent, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. Hawaii's always been expensive. I'm always it always has been expensive. <laughs> yes, yes. And, yeah, and but when what... people can't get out of California, it's hard for them to buy in Hawaii. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And what somebody described it to me earlier, it's kind of like a hangover, right? It's going to be hard. It's not easy. We had 2021, 2020 was really good. Now we're hitting that hangover. It's mm-hmm. going to be hard. And it's supposed to be hard, right? And we just need to kind of keep putting one foot in front of the other and get through. I will say that in some cases, people that have a 3% mortgage, doesn't make sense to get an 8% mortgage. More than likely, it just kind of depends, right? Because if I can allocate some of that equity to pay off higher interest debt, Mm. um, then we can look at that as a financial option, right? So it just... It, it drives me crazy sometimes when people say, I'm not going to get rid of this rate, right? Right. But then if you're paying higher interest debt, sometimes it could be advantageous in order to do so. And you're referring to you're referring to those people with those 24 to 28% credit cards is what you're talking about, correct? It's funny because mortgages are the one thing, you know, I teach first-time homebuyer classes here, and uh, mortgages are the one thing that people really focus on an interest rate on. Although it's usually amortized over a longer period of time, 30 years, right? And it's an appreciating asset, Mm -hmm. okay? But they don't focus on as like an auto interest rate or a credit card interest rate. Mm -hmm. Um, So yes, I mean, a lot of people when they balk at me when they're paying an 8% interest rate and I see they have credit cards maxed out, I'm like, well, you know, there's a give and take there. (laughs) And you're not kidding. It's 24%. Mm -hmm. Well, my credit card is like, in fact, my I think my Apple credit card, I'm like, I looked at this finally, I'm like, 24%? And Eric's like this, that's like average across the board. And when you think about paying a quarter of what it is to hold any type of debt load, it's very expensive. So, okay, so let's. I like the scenario though. So if you're like, you have a bunch of credit card debt, you're paying 24%, and then you have a house and you're only paying three or 4%. Can we walk me through how it makes sense to sell your house and go into an 8%? just to, to, to pay off all of your credit card debt. So you're, you're, you're yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it from a budgeting standpoint, right? Because okay. people don't pay bills based upon an interest rate. You pay bills based upon a monthly payment, right? right? So you pay your housing payment, you pay your car payment, you pay your credit cards. So if we can just simplify it and go from a budgeting standpoint and say, mm-hmm. okay, Julie, if I look at your housing, regardless of your interest rate, and then I add up all of your debt that we can pay off. And let's say that's, $5,000 a month that you're putting out, right? And we can take some of that equity and l- eliminate all the higher interest debt, which will save you money. And let's say that we can cut your mortgage payment to 4,000, although your mortgage payment is going up, your interest rate is going up on the new home, your total monthly output is going down, and it's an appreciating asset, right? right. Uh-huh. Um, so your total monthly output is going down and we just look at it from a sheer budgeting standpoint, take emotions, take interest rate out of, you know, out of it for a little bit and just say, okay, if you're paying this and we can pay off the majority of that debt, which as you kind of learn, right? Paying off credit card debt can get hard sometimes because if you don't make big chunks, you're just paying that interest, right? Right. If you're paying the minimum, you're not truly paying down your credit cards. You're just paying interest. Mm -hmm. So if we can help you get out of that, and although pay an 8% interest rate on a home that's going to appreciate and build you worth, I'd rather do that and pay off that higher interest debt that's not getting you anything. No, there you go. So all you viewers... Um, he just gave you guys an amazing financial nugget because, uh, uh, you know, it's when you use your home to actually help, you know, your, your monthly, you know, um, you know, basically out, output. Um, that's okay. So if people want to like learn a little bit more about that, they can call Joe and, and basically, right. get, and then you can like basically listen to somebody's um, scenario and get an idea of what if it's going to work or not for them. Right. Right. Yeah. A lot of people think if they reach out to me that they need to purchase a home, that's not the case. Right. All I want to do is just give you the information. I'm not here to try and sell anybody that now is the right time to purchase. That's up to that individual, right? I'm just here to help you and maybe think of things in a little different way, Mm -hmm. but help give you the information that you need in order to make that decision. A lot of people think they can't afford it, right? Mm -hmm. But 
I tell everybody, you you got to pay a housing payment regardless, right? right? Really? Unless you live with family or do something. So I, I wouldn't just discount that you can't afford it because rent isn't going down either, right? And rent can change on a year to year basis. So let's have a conversation before you just automatically think you can't afford it. Let's break down the numbers. Let's get the emotion out of it. And let's just do the math and give you the information so that you can make an informed decision from there. So I, I got a little story about that. Um, when we, when Julie and I were getting ready, we were, uh, we were in our condo. We we're getting ready to buy a, an actual house, to get out of it. And uh, we talked to uh, uh, several lenders and instead of giving us a scenario on how to move forward, they're just like, well, you guys aren't, aren't going to make it. It's just not going to happen. You know, try again in three years. But instead of giving a little bit of strategy on how to do it, it was much, it was just a straight no. And uh, a straight no is really hard to deal with. I mean, it's not hard to deal with. It's just hard to move forward. If you just, that's it, you can't do anything, but it sounds like there are some, other ways to kind of figure out how to get in most cases they're you know using some programs and some other stuff you might be able to figure out lower your raise your credit score to get to where you need to get to absolutely right. yeah. 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 that's what yep. that's what joe I, I always tell people go talk to joe because even if you can't afford a house today he can tell you how maybe it's going to happen in the next year or two for you because you give them an actual path to success by absolutely. saying absolutely these are the things you need to do. And I think that people can be more successful when they see the goal and exactly how to get there. Because I have a friend here in town who just, and, and you know this, Joe, you've seen this one. He, he has in his head, he can't afford a house. I'm like, you're paying like, I don't know, $2,800 a month in mortgage rate. I mean, in, a, in, a, in rent. And he, he has a, he has like, you know, his, his business is doing really well, but he's like a self-employed guy. And he has told himself that he can't afford a home. I'm like, have you talked sure. to somebody? No. I'm like, how do you know what you can apply if you can't do anything if you don't talk to somebody? Finally, I kicked him um, and he's going to try and get his act together. But um, sure. you know, it's just when I was helping people with um, housing fairs back in 2004 and five, uh, people walking in and getting the education that you provide because you're the home buying one on one thing. We're like, oh, my gosh, I never knew I could have been able to afford a house for the last few years. And look, at I could have taken advantage of getting into a home ownership experience. And so, yeah. So if you guys are watching this. Okay, and not like like Joe said, I'm not trying to sell you a house in Hawaii. I just want to see you get an investment piece of property that then you get a chance to have some security and stability in your life. And if you can do something like pay down, you know, get the credit card away and get the home where you're actually getting equity and you get a chance to live in something that you can count on, that's that's the benefit. So Totally. Yeah. Um, so and everybody that comes to me isn't a hundred percent ready to go. Right. I tell everybody, there's always things that you could be working on to get yourself in a better position, albeit pay down debt, increase your score, save more money, things like that, that again, will help you when you do come to buy. So the, nobody's in, it's like having kids, right? Are you ever a hundred percent ready to have a child? No. <laughs> right. You think maybe you did your best, but, um, that's why we're here, right? That's why you guys are real estate professionals. I'm a mortgage professional. Again, it's not to convince anybody to buy. It's just to give them the information so that they can make an informed decision and help them get to a point where they can purchase a home, right? Right. And um, you know what? I, I am seeing uh, the prices starting to come down a little bit here in Hawaii. And uh you know, it's it, it 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 would make sense. It help me if I'm right on this one, that um if mortgage rates aren't coming down and people still have to figure out how they're going to sell and buy a house, um, and uh, people still have to put their houses on the market, and now they can't get what they had wanted five years ago or two or three years ago because the buyers have left the market, prices are going to come down. Sure. Right? I mean, that's yeah. just like, you know, and that's kind of what's happening. And so um, now's the time to actually start watching what's going on with the market. Because if you get your, your goal in place and then you say, I can afford a $700,000 house or I can afford a $400,000 condo or whatever, then at least if you ask Eric and I to put you on a listing alert and you start looking at what's happening with the housing market and the prices yourself, you can actually do the research that you need to start saying, boy, this might be something I can do. And so, you know, with going to Joe first, get the game plan and then seeing what's going on with the market. Um, I think that that's a, it's a strong way of understanding what you can't afford and what's going on with the market. And you're basically, you're not you get the plan, you can look at the stuff yourself. And then when you're ready, you know, we can give you more information about what's happening, uh, you know, in the, the you know, especially neighborhoods that you're actually interested in buying in. So. 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of it's kind of exciting to actually see some place you might actually want to buy and to actually be able to afford it too. Is the two when the two cut together, you're like, yeah, woo, woo. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is <laughs> a good time though to because <laughs> right, a lot of people have gotten out of the market right because they're waiting for rates to go down. However, if you can still afford it, and I'm telling people, if you have five percent, let's say you have minimum five percent to put down. Get in now, please, because I do anticipate once rates do go down, let's say a percentage, we all kind of know what's going to happen at that point. It's supply and demand, right? When more people come into the market, it's going to drive prices up. Mm -hmm. And there's two things that affect affordability, the price you pay on a home and the interest that you pay. You only have one time to negotiate a price of a home, and that's when you purchase it. You can always renegotiate the rate if the rate goes down, right? So... Um, I think it's a great time to buy because Q two years ago, if you didn't have, you know, thousands of dollars to overbid for a property, do appraisal gaps, not waive inspections, you weren't getting your offer looked at, right? Now's the time to be able to negotiate. Mm -hmm. And that's where having professionals like the you guys and having us on our side, because the one thing too, even the before I tell somebody to, negotiate a lower price on a home, although that may sound great. Before you do that, let's negotiate either seller concessions to save your money so you can subsidize that payment or do a three, two, one buy down, two, one buy down, which are temporary buy downs where the seller subsidizes your payment, your one, your two, and can even if rates go down in that time frame, pay, help pay for a refinance to get you out of that rate. Right. right. So there's definitely things to do to make it more affordable right now, why we have the opportunity to negotiate. So mm -hmm. um, that I'm not sure is going to be there a year from now. That's true. That's true. And, and I can and, add uh, a little bit to the, uh, I can add a little bit to the uh, idea of, of uh, multiple offers versus, you know, we've had a, a few properties recently that have been, uh, that we've been selling and we're not seeing the multiple offers. We're, we're seeing, we're seeing a couple strong people per property, but that's two versus 10 versus before. And now if you get one person that has, you know, and if it, it is, it makes a big difference. So now you're only competing with one versus, you know, what it used to be is, you know, it was a feeding frenzy every time you tried to get something. Right. And you know what? Cash offers aren't the ones always winning because now people are actually think people are still believe it or not people are still getting mortgages look at that <laughs> <laughs> and then they come to us and say will you accept this offer and i'm not saying it has to be a 100 percent cash offer i just want to make sure it's a good offer because i didn't get 15 phone calls when we first placed that house on the market and it's been sitting there for five days now i'm like this just bring me a good offer so right. i do think that the, the, the market is definitely in that that flex zone so yeah. And also, I can add one more thing here. Also, a, a, maybe a strategy also is if, if you can get close to where you're in the market and you can get your mortgages straightened out, uh, even coming in as a backup offer wouldn't be the end of the world because uh, things in this market have been tending to fall through for various reasons, you know, funding or, or things changing and all kinds of things like that. So if you can, you know, find something you like, but you're the second person and put an offer on it, there's a good chance you might be the first person. Right. And a lot of sellers don't want to have to remarket the house. So if you came in a little bit lower, you actually might end up being in that secondary position. So, and people don't tell you that, like when I was, when Eric and I have been doing this for a long time, this whole second buying the, the person who does the backup offer, some people say, why would I do that? It's like, oh, well, cause you know what? We've seen offers fall apart and the second guy got a pretty good deal and he, he, he didn't have to like go out there and, you know, re, re, um, you know, be with like five other six different people buying at the same time. He just happened to be there. And then that goes right into his spot. And then the sellers are like, oh, let's just get this thing back into contract because we're, we've got other things to do with our lives. So it's a strategy. Yep. And then, um, and then Joe, so where are you looking at when you see 2025 in your life? <laughs> Forget 2024. Let's move past that. I know. Let's just go right by it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I did ask a bunch of people from our, our buyers group. I'm like, yeah, so what are you guys doing? Are you, are you still in the market? Are you, what are you doing? A large chunk of them did say, we're going to hang off and just watch what happens and look at those sure. interest rates. And so like, I think you're right in the sense that if enough people pull back, it does change the structure of the people who are still wanting to be in. But uh, do you think that all of a sudden, the, 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 how, how far the rates do the rates have to go down to create a frenzy again? And isn't the is, isn't the job of the of the Fed not to have a frenzy happen again anyway? It so is. We're not yeah. See a dramatic drop in rates anyway, right? I think it's going to be slow. You mm -hmm. know, I read a statistic the other day that if rates drop a percent, mm -hmm. that would cue five million people back into the market. 
So um, I do think it'll spur some activity. I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to like your point. I think probably fall 2024, we'll start to see kind of that lever ease up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Help rates kind of settle down. I don't think we're going to see rates in twos and threes again, right? For barring something catastrophic, but I do think five and a half, six rates are going to be the new norm. Mm. Um, so I do anticipate probably 2025 as being a really good year for real estate mm -hmm. um, because I do anticipate rates to go down probably a full percent sometime in 2025, mm -hmm. which will then spur some of the activity. Plus, I think people tend to um, get a little nearsighted, right? So you compare interest rates over the last five years. You can't compare something like interest rates over the last five years. You'll drive yourself crazy at this point because you're, you're comparing against that. twos and threes, right? right? Historically speaking, average interest rates are seven and a half percent, right? So that's I where we are think, right about now, right? Right, exactly. But so I do think people will start to say, okay, I got to stop waiting because I'm waiting for something that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. and was just an anomaly because of COVID and the Fed buying up all the bonds and keeping mortgage rates purposely low. So um, I think people will just start to get used to the new norm. Yeah. So qu question for you on that. So we know that the interest rates were um, were, were at two, two and 3%, right? I mean, def definitely low at that point, uh, which caused a, a spur of, of course of buying, right? That, that went on. And thus that we, we could conclude that that raised the prices pretty dramatically because of that. So question is, do you think that since we are, you know, since the interest rates are so high now, we, I mean, if we can get a little more inventory, wouldn't it seem that pricing should come down a little bit too, to, to kind of- 100%. Percent. By, by we just, just by need more inventory. Yeah. And that's, that's the question. And, and, you know, people can't hang out by not selling their houses forever. I mean, you know, exactly. there's, there's going to be a period of time where you got to move, somebody dies, whatever, it has to happen. And home builders are starting to slow down a little bit. Um, you know, so that that's really impacting the inventory too, because they don't want to be stuck with a home at 700,000 with an 8% interest rate that nobody can afford. Right. Um, so if we get more inventory, yes, 100%. Yeah. Well, in Hawaii, um, they're not building. We have yeah. a small inventory. Yes. That yeah. we know. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's another thing too, that people like I, we just have some friends here and she's crying because she's looking at the houses. And when you look on the MLS, you can see what they sold for like over the last time, you know, and she's been watching the housing going up by, you know, I mean, it's not kidding. I think it's gone at least 60% in the last three mm. years. So she's, you know, crying of the days that have gone by. And she said, do you think that these would ever come back down to those days again? And I said, no, I really don't. Especially in Hawaii, we don't, we don't have inventory. We have a bunch of demand and the housing prices aren't going to drop by 60%. They're just not. And so, you know, that's when you're talking about don't wait for something crazy to show up because it might not. So if it right. goes down by eight, maybe 10%, maybe if you're lucky. Um, but maybe if you're in Las Vegas, <laughs> where I hear they're having to slow down because too many houses that look a lot alike, all built like this, that's the, how that housing market always goes like this. Hawaii is like not as, as quite that much, just because so many people want to live here. So right. you're um, very protected. That market's very protective. It's recession proof, essentially. Um, you're not going to have the dips but, that you are in other markets. Yeah. I have a funny story about that. We came here in 2005 and it was the uh, 2008 recession that was that was here. And while, when we were here, um, this used to be mainly primarily a second home market. So uh, um, Airbnb wasn't around, so you couldn't make money on your house. So these are the people that bought this house with the idea that they were only going to be here three months out of the year and it was just going to sit the rest of the time. And so when the recession came, everybody sold their houses. Nobody wanted to do it. And nobody wanted to buy those houses because there was no way that they could most could afford it. So it's interesting now with the, you know, Airbnbs and things like that, that that they, since each house can be a moneymaker, now there's no empty houses. You know what I mean? Right. And, and the thing that really made a big difference here was the um, uh, working from home, you know, to be able to come here and sit in your condo or sit in your house and, you know, do your day job starting at two o'clock in the morning and get done by whatever time. And they, uh, But it enabled all those people with some big money to come out here too, which that again affected here the prices here. Yeah. 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 COVID really affected it because people could live anywhere, live and work anywhere. Once you realize that, then where are you going to go? Hawaii. 
<laughs> Except for now, if you have to go back in the office every other week, that might be right now. Yeah. yeah, but I think you know so funny for anybody who's been watching our little shows for a while that um uh it it they predicted that a bunch of people were going to be called back to offices in Silicon Valley and stuff. And you know what? I've met some people like that, and they basically told their 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 employers to go pack some sand, and they figured out another way to get another job so they could stay in Hawaii. So we have not seen a massive like people moving off the island and selling their houses because they had to go back to work. So um once you get bitten by the uh, aloha spirit, uh, you tend to figure out ways to make it happen for yourself by staying here and you know paying your mortgage um but i do think that uh, eventually like we we're talking about people have grandchildren that they have to move off the island to go see and they sell their houses i've seen that quite a few times and then we also have uh, some older investors at this point who are saying you know what um it looks like i've made a pretty good chunk of change in the last few years and i'm getting older and i want to put that money someplace else and they're selling their condos so i think that uh, if you're looking at buying a condo uh this might be a good time too because i'm starting to see more come on the market so but careful from an investment standpoint, everything has gotten very expensive on this side as well. The taxes have gone up pretty dramatically. And all of the uh, uh, example, a lot of the companies that that do the Airbnb that you would, uh, a company that you would use the, to work with them might take 20, 25 or 30% of your profits on top of that. So if you take a, a very large property tax and all that, it, it definitely cuts into the profits that they made when the, the first people made a lot of money, but now it, it it's definitely equaling out. Which goes to my point, however, that when I just said that, I was thinking about the one move for full time and use that as your primary uh, uh, home, yeah. that you get your mortgage from Joe and you come over here and you're not fighting against a bunch of investors because the investment market on the condos right now is a little sketchy, but it would work if the price goes down a little bit and you could afford to live here full time. So that's right. And your and your property taxes would be, would be much, or much yeah, lower. Yeah, I think the full time is 4% versus 11% for investors. So, you know, this, the dream can still be yours, guys. Don't give up. So, um, so uh, Joe, do you have any closing thoughts for uh, people in terms of uh, what they give, give them the top three things? So call you, get a game plan. Correct. Yeah. The biggest thing is just don't assume, right? Mm -hmm. Don't assume you can't afford it. Don't assume you can't do it. Reach out to somebody. If it's not me, somebody else, just to kind of get a game plan. Know what you can afford. Do your budget get things out of your budget that shouldn't be there, right? And kind of get that game plan in place. So just reach out sooner rather than later. It doesn't hurt to get a game plan in place. Yeah, and don't wait until you think you're six months out because Joe, you know, he's works with people two years out, three years out. You know, if, if you are, and then we're talking about people who are thinking about retiring. If you're three or four years out from retirement, you always thought I was gonna move to Hawaii Island. Don't think that the prices are gonna be a way that you can't afford it. Talk to Joe and then figure out, okay, how what you need to do now four years out so that way you can get in a position to be able to buy a condo or a single family home here. Um, there's still houses that, you know, are going for $600,000 in different parts of the island. There's, in fact, we found a beautiful one that someone wanted to go after for 600 in Hilo. And it was one of the, the most beautiful neighborhoods in Hilo. So it's, you know, it's where you want to live. So, um, okay. Hey, Eric, do you have anything? No, it seems like we've done a good job of covering a lot of more things that I was aware for mortgages today. <laughs> uh, so if you guys are watching this and you are regulars and you probably know that we do uh, market updates. So uh, we do one for East Hawaii by itself with our little buddy, uh, Amber, and she's going to be um, talking on November 8th, which is next Wednesday. And then we also have our uh, our island wide real estate market and mortgage market update um, on the 16th. And also we'll have Lance talking about the West Hawaii uh, real estate market this Friday. Um, and so if you guys want to learn more about when we're going to be doing these, uh, definitely go to um, 365yliving.com, join the Ohana. And uh, we send out um, twice monthly emails, giving you guys updates on when these things show up. And then also, obviously, check back at this uh, YouTube channel because we're always coming up with new content to help you guys make wise decisions in terms of home buying and getting mortgages. So with that, we will say aloha and thank you very much, Joe, for giving us your input, Welcome. and your uh, wonderful knowledge, and uh, Eric for being here too. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next go round. Do you find our channel interesting and entertaining? Did you know that we sponsor this channel by ourselves? One of our biggest compliments we get from our fans is when they reach out to us asking about their dream of moving to Hawaii. We 
want to help you when you first arrive here for your success. We want you to acclimate to the island and build friendships and be part of life here. So by joining us, we can get you into the ecosystem that you will be calling home by getting you some new friendships, putting you into a touch with events and different opportunities to volunteer. We have worked for over 13 years here in Kona to create this ecosystem. And with this ecosystem, we help you make your move successful. We offer free education in our 365 Hawaii Real Estate Minute channel. And the best part is, is that we give you the market updates three times a month, one in West Hawaii, East Hawaii, and another one that has five different realtors giving you their market updates from the different areas of the whole island. And that includes mortgage updates too. And our team includes our lenders that help you strategize a financial plan to move here. We also have stagers and um, videographers to help you sell your home for top dollar. So when you get a hold of us, we can also help you move off the island too. We've got a base of referrals across the United States and the islands to choose from. So please reach out to us here at 365 Hawaii if you want to have our team help you move to the island. You can do that by going to 365hawaiiliving.com. You can text, email, or simply reach out to us and we will help you make the leap to living in Hawaii. We